Hello friends, today we will be covering the topic precipitation from engineering hydrology. So let us first understand what is precipitation. So precipitation denotes all forms of water that reaches earth from atmosphere. So the usual forms of precipitation are rain, snow, frost, hail and dew. Now out of all these forms of precipitation, the first two that is rain and snow it denotes or it contributes to the maximum amount of water. Now we shall see forms of precipitation in detail. So rain, here the water drop size is less than 6 mm and it is greater than 0.5 mm. For light rain, the intensity of rain or the intensity of precipitation will be 2.5 mm per hour. For moderate rain, the intensity will be 2.5 mm per hour to 7.5 mm per hour. And for heavy rain, the intensity will be greater than 7.5 mm per hour. Snow, the density here varies from 0 0.06 to 0 0.15 gram per centimeter cube and it occurs in Himalaya regions. Drizzle, fine sprinkle of water droplets less than 0.5 mm and intensity less than 1 mm per hour. Talking about glaze, rain or drizzle comes in contact with cold ground at 0 degree centigrade. So water drops, water drops can be either in the form of rain or drizzle, freezes and it form ice coating which is called as glaze. Hail, it is showery precipitation, irregular pallets or lump size greater than 8 mm and lump of ice size greater than 8 mm. It occurs in violent thunderstorms. Now how precipitation is formed? So the following are four conditions for the precipitation to be formed. So number one is the atmosphere must have moisture. Generally the relative humidity uh, should be greater than at least it should be greater than 90% and in ideal condition it should be 100% and sufficient nuclei to add condensation, suitable weather condition for the condensation of water vapor and products of condensation must reach earth. Now these are different weather system for precipitation to form. So uh, one, number one is front. So in frontal precipitation what happens? There is interface between two distinct air masses. As you can see from the figure here it is cold front and this the another one air mass warm front. So what happened here? The warm air rises from the warm front over the cold front. Why the warm air rises? Because it is lesser in density. So this warm air cools adiabatically here and it forms clouds and it then condenses and form precipitation. The next weather system for precipitation is cyclone. So cyclone, it, it is large low pressure region with circular wind motion and it is commonly known as cyclone in India, hurricane in USA and typhoon in Southeast Asia. And its aerial extent is of, of about 100 to 200 kilometer in diameter and winds here are anti-clockwise in the northern hemisphere. Now talking about the anti-cyclones, so these are the regions of high pressure. Now you can figure out the difference also here between a cyclone and anti-cyclones. These are region of low pressure and these are regions of high pressure. Weather is usually calm in center and the wind here is clockwise in northern hemisphere. Here winds are anti-clockwise, here it is clockwise. Winds are of moderate speed and clouds and precipitation prevails at the outer edges as the weather is usually calm in the center. Now the next weather system for precipitation is convective precipitation. So here what happens? The packet of air rises due to the localized heating. So the packet of air that is warm air rises. So air from the cooler surrounding flows to take up its place, take the place of warm air and set up the convective cell. So warm air rises cools down and form precipitation and depending upon the moisture content, thermal, pressure difference, temperature difference, all such kind of conditions, its aerial extent is small about 10 km. Now orographic precipitation, so in orographic precipitation what happens that this moist air rises to higher altitudes and here itself it get condenses because of the presence of mountain barrier. So it can, it won't go up above this because of the presence of mountain barrier. Here itself it get condenses and form precipitation. So this portion of the mountain is called as windward side and this portion of mountain is will be called as leeward side, right. So in mountain ranges the windward slope as you can see will receive heavy rainfall and the leeward side will be 
uh, receiving light rainfall because here the air is dry and it is the descending air. Orographic rainfall in India is seen only over the western ghats and one or the other example is the Cherrapunji and Moiseram. These are the wettest places in the world due to its location in the windward side of the Himalayas. And Tibet being in the leeward side of the Himalayas remains dry for most of the year. Now measurement of precipitation. So precipitation is expressed in terms of the depth to which rainfall water would stand on an area if all the rain are collected on it. So we can say that like 1 mm rainfall in 1 hour or 10 mm or 100 mm rainfall in 3 hours or we generally uh, use these kind of terms and we generally uh, talk in terms of the depth to measure the precipitation and it is collected and it is measured in a rain gauge. Other terms for this rain gauge can be pluviometer, obrometer and hydrometer. It consists of a cylindrical vessel assembly kept in the open to collect rain and it is classified into non-recording gauges and recording gauges. So talking about non-recording rain gauges, so Simon's gauge is commonly used in India as non-recording rain gauges. It consists of a circular collecting area of 12.7 cm, 5 inch diameter and height 30.5 cm. So here as you can see from the figure, the rain is collected in this circular collecting area and it is measured every day at 8.30 am and it is recorded as the rainfall of that day. So supposingly 150 mm is collected one day, so it will be 150 mm in 24 hours or some day 1000 mm rainfall is collected in 24 hours, so the rainfall for that day will be 1000 mm in 24 hours. It can also measure snowfall. Now talking about the recording rain gauges, recording rain gauges produces a continuous plot of rainfall against time. Unlike non-recording rain gauges where you get only one day rainfall data, here you can produce the rainfall data for one day, two day, three day, four day and so on. It provides data of intensity and duration of rainfall for hydrological analysis. So talking about, uh, so first comes tip tipping bucket type. So it is, it is a 30.5 centimeter size rain gauge. Buckets are balanced, so here two buckets are used. So these buckets are balanced such that when 0.25 mm of rainfall collects in one bucket, it tips and bring the other one in position. So that's how you get a continuous plot of rainfall against time in tipping bucket type. Now weighing bucket type, it also gives a plot of accumulated rainfall against the elapsed time. Natural siphon type, it was also called as float rain gauge and it is, it is adopted as standard rain gauge, standard recording rain gauge in India and it also gives plot of mass curve of rainfall. Now telemetric rain gauges, it gather rainfall data from mountainous regions and inaccessible places. So where all other three recording gauges, recording rain gauges cannot be used due to their inaccessibility, telemetry rain gauges are used there to gather the rainfall data. Now these were the questions previously asked in GATE and ES. So I am listing few of them. So number one, which of one of the following is not a major type of storm precipitation? So number one, frontal of storm, air mass storm, orographic storm or continental storm. So since we have read already about these three storm but we didn't read about continental storm as it is not counted as a major type of storm precipitation. So your answer for this question will be continental storm as it is not a major one. Now the next question is obrometer, pluviometer is used to measure what? And your options are soil measure stress of a plant, rainfall depth, leaf area, root zone depth. So we have read about this that obrometer, pluviometer, hydrometer, these are synonyms to rain gauge and rain gauge is used to measure rainfall depth. These rain gauges used to me measure precipitation that is rainfall depth. So the correct answer for this will be option B rainfall depth. The next question is in India which of the following is adopted as standard recording rain gauges. So Simon's rain gauge, tipping bucket type, natural siphon type, weighing bucket type. So we can eliminate here option A as Simon's rain gauge is not a recording rain gauge, it is a non-recording rain gauge. So out of the other three options. The natural siphon type is the recording rain gauge that is adopted as standard rain gauge in India. Next question, precipitation caused due to striking of air masses with a topographical feature. Now here the topographical feature can be taken as a mountain barrier. So we have read also 
that precipitation caused due to striking of air mass with the mountain barrier will cause what kind of precipitation so your options are frontal precipitation orographic precipitation convective precipitation or none of these and your option for this is and your answer for this is orographic precipitation because in frontal precipitation the precipitation occurs because of the interface of the two distinct air mass in the convective precipitation a convective cell is formed and in orographic precipitation is caused due to striking of the moist air mass masses or the rising air mass with a mountain barrier thank you